Hello, everybody. Hello, dear friends. Uh, I'm Alexandre Michy, cardiologist working in Montluçon, France. I have the um, pleasure to uh, host this evening along with uh, uh, my special colleagues, uh, Dr. Aisha Kader for Bangladesh, from Bangladesh and Dr. Professor Holger Neff from Germany. Uh, we have the privilege to host uh, this uh, exceptional webinar um, in which Professor uh, Jean Marco uh, from uh, Toulouse, um, which is the past president of the PCR family, uh, will present to us um, um, an analysis uh, of PCI um, with regards to past, present and future. I would just like to say that uh, I remember um, very well uh, Professor Marco from all the PCR Congresses, and I was amazed by his uh, ability to simplify things and by his ability to explain things in such a manner that you would uh, completely and um, instantly um, uh, understand them. And uh, this is also a huge pleasure for myself and also for uh, all, all of you who are attending this webinar. Uh, the webinar has uh, around 700 subscriptions, uh, but from my experience, around 10 to 20% of you will be online. Um, the webinar can be viewed uh, afterwards also uh, on YouTube and on the other networks. So uh, I would like to salute Dr. Aisha Kaider and uh, Professor Horgan Neff and uh, give the word to Professor Jean Marco. Thank you, Alexandre, for your kind word. Thank you for your invitation. The main goal of this webinar is to share with you some key message from uh, PCI history with a critical contemplation at the present in order to guide you in building the great, a great future. So the agenda of this webinar is first, uh, uh, sorry, the mistake you know, in, a, in a slide, is a first mistake. First to analyze the history with uh, for the first part of the balloon angioplasty and then we will do a break. Then the state era, we do another break. Then we contemplation on, at the present and together let's look uh, at the greater future. So starting with uh, the, the past. The story starts in 1964. Short daughter in US, uh, in Oregon, had a, a vision to perform a percutaneous transluminal angioplasty by using a Teflon uh, device to enlarge the lumen of the vessel and to compress the pla by compressing the plaque. And he performed femoral angioplasty with this technique. Of course, uh, immediately he understood the limit of the tool he used. And he tried to convince some uh, industry partner to develop new tools. But the answer of the community was, this is a crazy idea with no future. So that none of the company contacted uh, give a positive answer. But, uh, sorry, uh, in 1968, Ebra Zeitler from Germany believed on this concept and implement the concept of daughter technique to treat critical femoral stenosis. And in 1971, Andreas Grunzik, at this time fellow in Zurich in the uh, angiology department, visit uh, Ebra Zeitler and uh, was convinced also on the future of this technique. So three people. The question what uh, three people are the consensus. This technique are the future. But to have to move and to change the device and to move to the concept of balloon catheter. But are we going to do it? In Germany, it was exactly the same. The, the medical community say 
this is a crazy idea. No future in Umente for this idea. So this is what stop. But uh, Andreas implement this uh, technique in Zurich. I think he implement this technique in Zurich with uh, in mind a long-term vision. First step, to develop a balloon angioplasty, and then in order to move to the percutaneous coronary balloon angioplasty. And how to make his dream come true. Sorry. Uh, by commitment, determination, teamwork, and strong work ethics. First, he established close relationship with the two cardiovascular surgeon. And this is a very important message. Team with a cardiovascular surgeon that supported the idea. Then he took contact with a retired engineer that the men teach him how to manipulate the PVC plastic and how to create with his man with his hand a balloon catheter at the distal tip of a, a very flexible catheter, a balloon with a distal tip of a, a flexible balloon catheter. And thanks to this uh, strong collaboration, in October 75, he performed the first balloon angioplasty in a femoral artery. He was a starting point of the history balloon. But Andreas have in mind to extend this technique to the coronary artery. Animal experimentation was mandatory. And in 1976, he presented the animal result in dogs, in dogs. This animal experimentation was conducted thanks again to the collaboration with the cardiovascular surgeon, Marco Turina, done uh, uh, a model a coronist of coronary stenosis in dogs. And thanks to this collaboration, Andras can check the concept of coronary balloon angioplasty in the coronary in dogs. And very quickly, Richard Myler from San Francisco was convinced on the future of this technique. And this uh, poster uh, during the 1976 American art meeting gave me the opportunity to take the first contact with Andras Gunzik and Richard Myler. They become later, they become, uh, of course, my mentors, but uh, become uh, most importantly friends. And we see the importance in the future. Immediately, Andreas, in this animal study, underlined the first uh, two major issues. First, antimal dissection with a risk of uh, the occlusion acute or subacute occlusion, and the new antimal cell proliferation with a risk of restenosis. This is what's well established in animal studies. But what a risk about the risk of embolization if we perform uh, this uh, in uh, atherosclerotic plaque in human. And then again, it was thanks to the team approach that he resolved this, this question, the issue. Richard Myler invite Andreas to try to experiment, to test the concept of balloon angioplasty during bypass surgery, thanks to the collaboration of the, with the, the, the cardiac surgeon in the San Marius Hospital in San Francisco, who accept that Andreas perform balloon angioplasty during bypass graft uh, in patients with uh, severe coronary artery stenosis. And thanks to this collaboration in 1977, they demonstrate that the balloon angioplasty of uh, uh, atherosclerosis in the coronary artery first was feasible 
and secondly, without any risk of um, distal embolization of debris. Then a very important step. In 1977, Andras met uh, Elian Kanepa, a recently uh, graduate uh, from a business school, recently graduated from business school. She was uh, uh, interesting in an interesting job. And she met uh, uh, Andreas. And immediately, she, she was enthusiastic with the concept of uh, uh, and, uh, and the personality of Andreas. And she later, she played a very crucial uh, role in the development of uh, perpetual scurry balloon angioplasty. Andras Engner convinced Eris Ben to invest money in a startup. The startup was namely the Schneider Medical Company. And this, start, this uh, uh, startup, very on an artisanal way, developed the first balloon Grunzig Dilaka catheter with uh, at a distal tip, a double lumen with a distal tip. Uh, uh, to control the pressure or to inject some, uh, some products. And this was a key step in the development of uh, balloon uh, PTCA. And thanks to that, in September 70, 1977, and thanks to the support of a cardiac surgeon, Andreas performed the first coronary angioplasty in a 30 years old man with critical stenosis on the proximal LED present to him by his fellow Bernie Mayer. The dream is coming true. And 40 years later, this is during the, in 1977 at Europe the patient and the Bernie Mayer, the cardiologist, was in perfect health. So long term result was excellent. Then uh, Andreas performed uh, two other balloon angioplasty on a coronary artery in Zurich and moved to Germany to perform in November 24, 77 with Martin Kartelbach, other balloon coronary angioplasty and Richard Meiler and Steinman Terzer in the US the same days, March 1st in 1978, performed the first coronary angioplasty with successfully in US. This is, was a teamwork approach. And after presentation, oral presentation and in peer review paper presentation of the first clinical result, many of cardiologists wish to move on this direction and perform a balloon angioplasty. And it was a dilemma because uh, the technique has to be developed uh, progressively. And maybe you have a, and also have to face to the dilemma of to control the balloon fever. This was a, 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 a great dilemma to him. And uh, he found a solution, he found a solution by launch the, the first uh, 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 course with uh, live demonstration aiming to show in the working situation the material the tip and tricks and uh, to uh, share uh, with all the participants all the issues and difficulties and complications. And this is a very important message. First, uh, he, Andreas, of course, uh, insists on the compliance with the indication and protocol with the requirement, requirement of, the, of an adequate uh, training program and the need to implement a systematic critical analysis and evaluation process essential for a continuous improvement to achieve optimal clinical results. 
during this lovely demonstration and the discourse, he talked about failure as much as success. Each failure, it was his philosophical means, each failure must be analyzed with honestly, objectively, and share with the world community as a key learning. This was a philosophy. About uh, the protocol. First, uh, the feature of the religion had to be analyzed on at least two orthogonal view and draw in a paper, on paper, only greater than 60% narrowing by using caliper has to be accepted for PTC event. It's a starting point of QCA, systematic QCA. A systematic surgical standby was required. We mean that all the case has to be discussed with a surgical team in order to be ready in case of complication to move immediately to bypass surgery. Then when the patient was accepted for PCR, bolus of heparin and some of the practitioners at this time forgot or don't follow, the, they did not follow this uh, advice and they get uh, a, a, a lot of trouble. Intracoronary nitrate, then with a balloon, you have to control the gradient and the gradient have to be more than 20 millimeter of mercury to accept balloon angioplasty. Keep in mind, after optimal vasodilatation is the beginning of FFR, of course. QCA and FFR was uh, just described. So my two, some reflection. During this period of time, I made the several trip to Zurich on Thursday because Andreas performed PCR, PTCR only on Thursday, one day. He was allowed only for one day. Andreas was always, always very welcoming, sharing self-critical reflection, open failure and complication each time the first step was to share with me failure and complication rather than success. With honestly, honesty, objectivity, and of course, he shared the tip of, uh, uh, and hints. During this period of time, I had a special relationship with Richard Meyer. He worked with me to San Francisco for two weeks. Let me report the history of this day. My first day at the San Marie Hospital. Richard Myler, okay. We're going to review a great number of films together. Please, I invite you to freely express for each case your point of view. Okay, thank you. And they become by showing me the theme of every complication and failures. Analyze with open mind, only complication. And we spend the first day to review the theme of complication and failure and to reflect on the potential causes. Well, at this time, he performed only two, maximum three PTC procedure every week, every week. So I had time to go through the film of the success and we look for the success. But the message is first sharing the failure and complication. Richard and Myler and Elias Hanna, the cardiac surgeon, 
share all the tips and tricks on emergency bypass surgery, pointing out potential causes of the problem. To that, I call my cardiac surgeon, Gerard Fugnier, and I said, please, Gerard, you have to come in San Francisco. And he went to San Francisco. And he shared with all the surgical team all how to do, how to deal, how to manage urgent bypass surgery after failure of PCR. So that after these two months, all the team was well prepared to successfully launch the coronary angioplasty program. And it is the first message. We had a lot of success because of that. In 1980, during the course, Andreas invites all centers to send their success, uh, the results, honestly. And the initial assessment of the overall experience was written live on a blackboard. Success rate around 65%. Failure around 34%. Emergency bypass surgery around 10%. So the problem of standby was a major problem and mortality around 1.5%. So what about the future? What should we be doing? And then I insert this uh, picture just to illustrate the spirit of this course. Andras invite me to report some reflection on the possible causes of this section by sharing films on a Tagarno cine machine in front of my master, Masson Sons, who would teach me the Croy Angela. Despite my very poor English, Andreas and Masson Sons encouraged me to clarify my truth and conclude with very constructive key learning remarks. And this is uh, for me was uh, uh, something that I will I never forgot in my uh, professional career. Of course, at this time it was necessary to implement, to improve the uh, performance of the tools. And the first step was uh, in 1982, when uh, John Simpson, for several reasons, developed the coaxial steerable, steerable guide wire and over the wire balloon. Let me report an anecdote. In 1982, I organized uh, the first uh, internal meeting in Toulouse. And uh, John called me two weeks before the meeting. And he said to me, hey, John, I have already successfully used the guide wire and over the wire balloon technique in several patients. This will be an excellent opportunity to present this clinical result during the, your meeting. Sorry, John. Unfortunately, the oral presentation program is full, but we could present your experimental clinical result as a poster, as, as poster format. We don't have a poster session schedule, but we can do it. In the we can do it. We have place in a corridor across uh, the exit of the of the auditorium, so that all the people will see the, your poster, and you can have a two, three poster 
as you want. And we could organize a, a debate session entitled Debate on the Guy Wire Balloon and, and Coaxial Balloon on the Wire Technique. Okay. With the Tagano, you can show all the film you want. So we organize uh, this session with uh, the creme of the creme of the PTCA technique uh, at this time. And uh, after a long debate, the conclusion on the future of all this technique. What is the future of this thing? And the conclusion was, was we can expect a niche for around 50% of the PTCA procedure by using over the wire and guy wire. So what I learned for this debate, be cautious before expressing a point of view on the potential future of an innovation. As you know, one person, a few years later, 1% of the procedure was performed by using the Y. You don't imagine on today to perform PTCI with uh, not over the Y balloon. So next step, 1992 to 1985, Jeffrey Hassler in Kansas City and Barry Rutherford extend the indication of uh, balloon angioplasty, coronary artery, balloon angioplasty in patients with multivessel disease, with uh, doing different stenosis in one session, in patients with acute coronary syndrome, including acute aphasia of MI, in patients uh, more than uh, 70 years old, he extends in complex uh, patients. And of course, it was a lot of debate uh, on this approach. And uh, Andreas was reluctant on that. Andreas uh, advocate for a more conservative, conservative approach, a single lesion on a vessel, on only one vessel during a PTCR procedure. And in patients with two vessel disease, start with uh, the more treated uh, vessel and ensure that this vessel has been secured before uh, uh, moving in the second vessel one day later. This sequential approach was based on the risk during the first 24 hours of an occlusion for each dilated stenosis and the need to control the outcome before dilating fusor lesion on the second vessel. A debate on this topic during the SSC meeting in March 95 has been followed with, uh, by a full auditorium. And Jeffrey Asler was very aggressive. And you see the picture of, uh, of the face of uh, Andreas. Richard Meyer had invited Andreas, Simon Sturger and myself to spend a weekend following this uh, meeting at his home in the uh, south of San Francisco. I will share with you part of the conversation over uh, 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 a great dinner. I wanted to, uh, to hear from them about uh, my plan to build the best European annual course uh, in the field. And of course, the conversation return to the content of the discussion during the SEC. Andreas say, me, say to me, Jeff is a very strong man. He is the best. What he shows, very few cardiologists can claim to do. I cannot do this with existing tools. Nevertheless, I am convinced that the extension of indication in patients with acute coronary syndrome, multivessel disease, complex lesion is a future of PTCA. However, if the cardiologists, many cardiologists, try to move in this direction, 
the complication will kill the technique. And he said me, my role and your role, if you want to implement the courses, is to teach a step-by-step -step progressive approach of the technique, starting by the simple before moving to the complex. And we need to carefully evaluate our action. The first randomized trial in multivessel patient is planned. We must wait for the result before explaining the indication. And this for me was a very important message. Unfortunately, Andreas passed away a few months later in October 27, 1985. Development technique. Very few people know this name. In 1986, 86, Tassilio Bonzel play, uh, developed the monoid system. And uh, this monoid system was later, uh, namely, a uh, name by the US company Rapid Exchange. And it was uh, what you are using on today's. So the key message I took away from this period develop uh, our project with commitment and determination, teamwork, strong work ethic, attract and retain the best, and continuous quest for improvement. So we can have a break and maybe take time for answering some questions. Thank you so much, Professor Marco. Uh, do any of my colleagues have any questions for the moment? Yes, that, that was really fascinating. I'm particularly intrigued by the QCA on a paper, the systematic review and meta-analysis on a blackboard, and really how much focus there was on ensuring the safety data and the safety, how, how much importance was placed on the fact that the procedures that were being done were safe. So nowadays we have C marks and FDA approval for devices. How did it work back then? So when a balloon was developed, how, how does one acquire it in your cat lab, given of course, granted how the few centers that would have access to it? Professor Marco. Thank you, uh, uh, Aisha. First about the QCA, the still, I advised to do the same in complex region. It was a QCA, it was a, really the QCA. But still on today, I advise the young cardiologists want to do a PCI to start by to drive the lesion, the feature of the lesion on at least two or three orthogonal view for complex lesion like a bifurcation, draw on paper the lesion and analyze and try to reconstruct in 3D in the nine, in the brain, in the brain, the, the feature of the atherosclerotic plaque. This is uh, 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 my advice. About the safety, okay, at this time, the number of balloons was very full, very, very few. We have a grand Zika balloon from Schneider, and then uh, we move to the over the white balloon with two companies that develop over the white balloon, the uh, UCI, e, 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 UCI company in, in US uh, and the SES uh, company developed by uh, John Simpson. We have only two balloons and one a special balloon, balloon developed by Jeff Hausler. So we have a very few balloons and it was very simple. And of course, we were, we were very happy when we have a balloon and not we don't try to have a many balloons. It was more simple than today. Well, dear, um, dear Professor Marco, thank you again uh, very much for this uh, very interesting lectures on interventional cardi cardiology. And I, I think um, the, the, the history is very fascinating because it uh, tells us so much and uh, we can learn a lot of things. Um, I think nowadays um, I was really impressed about your 
um, pioneering spirit and of course the leadership in the field of interventional cardiology. Um, well, for me, it's uh, a very interesting to know how did you deal in these times with drawbacks? Uh, I, I guess not every new invention or new technique worked instantly and uh, there were some complications with a new technique or with, an, with a new balloon. And uh, what was um, the impulse to keep on going um, and not to, yeah, to stop frustrating? You are muted, you are still muted. We cannot hear you, Professor Marco. I can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. At this time, I remember some uh, cardiologists that uh, went to Toulouse to meet me because the French cardiologists all were very contrarious and to share with me complication. And uh, it was a psychological approach. Some cardiologists say after one or two severe complications, say, I will stop. And then the, it was a role of psychological role to uh, pursue, pursue these people to follow on the, on the duration. Of course, uh, it was the first time that uh, we can perform uh, an intervention in, uh, in a human, in a table, speaking with the people. And you imagine if you have a severe complication which require emergency surgery, of course, is uh, one point, but the patient was prepared to that. But if the patient died on the table, this was uh, a terrific complication. And the cardiologists were not, uh, 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 not trained, but uh, were not uh, uh, very well uh, uh, prepared to this complication. About the new technique, it was very easy because if you have an idea, you have to move, for example, in Europe, you have to move to the Schneider company and uh, Eliane Canepa, just to explain, uh, we have an idea. She was very open to uh, uh, develop an idea. Uh, and in the US, it was only two companies. So it was very easy at this time. Thank you so much, Professor Marco. Uh, for the sake of uh, the beautiful presentation, I suggest you continue and we will put questions afterwards. Okay. So the second part is a coronary stent area, era. You have to imagine 30 years ago, 35 years ago, we plan a PTCA and then the major issue was a dissection, occlusive dissection. Occlusive dissection could happen on the table. So then the over the white technique was uh, uh, very important because we can maintain the balloon, uh, the, 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 the wire, and maybe the balloon, deflate the balloon over the lesion and send the patient, transfer the patient to the uh, operative room. But sometime occlusion happen, happened few hours later when the patient was in the recovery room or midnight. And of course, this was a, a great issues for the surgical team. So remember the, this name of the cardiac surgeon from Zurich, ex Henning, was concerned with this problem. And he believed in the concept of Stent is an old concept, and it convinces uh, uh, um, industrial men in, Zurich, in Lausanne and Walston to invest money to find the, the, sol the solution. And thanks to the collaboration with uh, Ulrich uh, Sigvart, uh, 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 cardiologist involved in a PTCA program, they develop uh, a self-expandable stent, the wall stent. In the same time, in the US, uh, radiologist Cesare Gentulco and Gary Rubin working in Atlanta first with uh, 
Andreas Gönczyk, and then the Julio Plasmar, Palmas and Richard Chas developed the concept of balloon extend, expandable stands. So about to the world stands, the most important time was uh, June 86 in Lausanne, uh, a key procedural landmark. It was a live demonstration uh, during a course in Lausanne organized by Uri Sigvar. At the end of the morning, uh, Barry Rutherford uh, performed uh, balloon angioplasty on the proximal left uh, anterior artery. And uh, what happened then, it was a lunch time. And uh, at 2 p.m., when the people who was in the room, attendees was in the room, Urish uh, explained what happened during the lunch. This lady had the chest pain, ST elevation, con immediate control through an acute occlusion, and he successfully uh, implanted a uh, 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 wall stent. And it was the first time that in live, there was uh, the, this patient avoid the bypass surgery thanks to the, the, to the stent. This uh, stent uh, implantation was a matter of a long discussion at night at the bar of the hotel. And again, the creme of the creme of the PTC in the world did not believe on this concept. They said, this is not a good concept. This will never be tolerated to place a piece of metal within the coronary artery. At this time, I was working in the laser, and the conclusion was, what you are doing, laser, in the future, but the stent do not have any future. This be careful before claiming uh, your vision on uh, innovation. Then progressively, the wall stand disappear for many reasons, and the concept of uh, balloon expandable stand uh, uh, dominate uh, the, uh, the, the, and then uh, the PTCA become PCI, and the uh, cartilages become international cartilages by implanting the stents in the coronary artery. But uh, this resolved the problem. This resolved the problem of, of uh, 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 bypass surgery, of uh, standby and uh, urgent bypass surgery. But what about stent thrombosis? And then uh, it was very difficult to convince that it was a major issue. I remember the first presentation during the American art meeting in, in Dallas. We present with Jean Fajate the first series, a large series of uh, Palma Chat stent implantation with a very aggressive anticoagulation regimen. This anticoagulation regimen cause a 10% of vascular femoral access complication. And we had a six or 7% of uh, acute of stent acute thrombosis. And it was a very aggressive comment for our colleague from US about this uh, 7% of uh, stent thrombosis. And they said it's not due to the stent, but the stent is due to your technique. And of course, uh, a randomized trial uh, benestent uh, confirmed this problem. And this issue was resolved, uh, you know, by the antiplatelet inhibition and dual antiplatelet uh, uh, regime. And it was uh, during this uh, uh, time, a very important uh, 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 innovation. Ferdinand Kimene from Deutschland proposed a transradial approach. And in 1984, Jean Fajate performed a case during a broadcast live from Toulouse to the TCT. He performed a case on a patient well prepared by Ticlopidine for two days before the procedure. Then by transadial approach, he implanted a stand on the proximal LED, LED. And then the patient, two, or two hours later, went in a, in a room and in front of the auditorium, he spoke. He, uh, he was walking. So the way of uh, ambulatory, modern ambulatory 
uh, PCI was open. The problem is the stent thrombosis was resolved with a dual antiplatelet treatment, but uh, again, another issue in stent retinose. And again, it was exactly the same. Some key opinion leader say is not a major issue. And the people, we saw some people doing very aggressive endoluminal reconstruction by using multiple stent or implanting long stent and by explaining that the instant retinosis is not a major issue. And of course, again, randomized clinical trial and well a conduct uh, uh, registry show that the instant retinosis when implanting single stent, it was around 20, 25%, but by implanting long stent or endoluminal reconstruction, it was around 50%. And several techniques was proposed to resolve the issue, including brachytherapy, but uh, none of these techniques uh, provide uh, acceptable results. Let me remember a very important uh, publication at this time, David Sackett, Evidence-Based in Medicine. What is this and what is not? Is integrating individual clinical expertise and the best external evidence. And today, this is maybe not well understood by the community, but it was a very important step in the history. Then the, two, the, the 2000, the year 2000, the mechanism of his tenderness and also was well uh, understood and the DS was developed. And this uh, enlarged the indication of uh, PTCI. But uh, I remember, and then this was uh, for me, uh, uh, what stood for me during this early period, after the cipher the taxes, Remy Rimani showed the problem of thrombosis and vessel pseudoaneurysm. And despite of this publication, despite of the, this report, the on, on autopsy, very few cardiologists and devotional cardiologists follow this direction and uh, understood. And uh, this is my personal. Uh, opinion that various forms of conflict of interest have dominated the notion of strong professional ethics. It was a huge uh, financial uh, vision and uh, we have to be careful today on that. With the second generation of stent, this uh, problem disappeared, but be careful, we don't master uh, Mother Nature uh, yet, and uh, the problem of uh, lead ketchup is uh, still uh, a problem. So the 2000, there is a lot of new DS, lot of new technologies, multimedia modalities, huge flow of information. And this is uh, today you are facing with this problem of use flow information. And uh, you have to be careful on this uh, huge flow information. Something is missing, something is missing. And this is uh, my conclusion of, uh, uh, of the contemplation of the present is uh, that what is missing. First, all the cardiologists have to be aware, how to understand what is biome clinical trials. What does it mean, P less than 0.05, or ratio, uh, Bayesian uh, 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 technique, or all this world, this crazy world. And very few of the practitioners know that. So the international, the key opinion leader or academics can explain something that uh, we have to understand. The second uh, thing that is for me is missing is we have to move to the concepts or to the basic concepts of health economic for non-economics. 
this is uh, the problem of uh, uh, this is a major problem. If you don't, if the medical doctor don't move on this direction, other people from uh, administration we take uh, the control on that. It's not too late. And then finally to learn how to become a leader, mainly for those working in hospital and wish to become chief of the department, but uh, also for the young generation. This is my contemplation of the future. And now maybe we have time to look toward the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Marco. Uh, it has been a really astonishing presentation. Um, let's let's maybe um, attack it by. Um, I, I would have a question. So I understood that the uh, antiplatelet treatment uh, at start it was very difficult. Um, what did you use in the first stance? Uh, I'm, you have to unmute your microphone. Sorry. Uh, the story of uh, 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 antiplatelet inhibition started in France by Paul Barra. Paul Barragan, he Mark said that uh, he, uh, he he used the diclopidine, and then uh, Michael Morris uh, uh, start by developing registry, uh, first uh, replacing uh, IV heparin by infusion by low molecular weight heparin plus uh, oral anticoagulation, don't work, and then the uh, Michel Bertrand. Uh, 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 plan a, a randomized clinical trial comparing uh, the anticoagulation regime with uh, heparin and uh, very aggressive and uh, uh, oral anticoagulation versus uh, ticlopidine aspirin. And then we start uh, on this, and it was a success. And then it was a starting point uh, of the story of uh, dual antiplatelet. At this time, it was only with ticlopidine, and then what later many trials by using clopidogrel, prasugrel, and so and so. Yeah, Deshaun, just a question. Um, what was the uh, innovation of balloon expanded stands? Was this an invention coming from the companies or was the was there a face behind? No, uh, the balloon expandable stand was developed uh, uh, first of all in the US uh, by uh, Julio Palmas. Uh, uh, and then the, he, he created a startup, you know, and he did find, it was the same. He started with his concept and did define a, a, a company to develop uh, this uh, balloon and metallic uh, uh, stand, balloon expandable metallic stand. He didn't find, he created a startup, it's the difference uh, between US and Europe. And uh, Richard Chas uh, tried to improve uh, with him the, 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 the concept to move on, on the coronary. And it was the same, Gentuco, uh, Cesare Gentuco and uh, Gary Rubin find the, the help of, uh, of a company at this time, it was a cook company to develop the understood. But it was uh, very, uh, uh, to develop the, this concept, I think it was, it, it needed seven years, I think, uh, between the starting point uh, of your Palmas and uh, the finalization by Johnson and Johnson of the Palmashat stand. Well, if you look uh, a little bit in the past and you know also the presence of uh, interventional cardiology. Um, so the question I have, and we have developed so fast and we can treat almost everything. We can do the complex lesions. Now we can do multi disease. We can do left main bifurcations. We do rotor blade. We, we can do the shock wave and the lithotripsy and mm -hmm. we can uh, do the orbital atherectomy. What is in your opinion, the, uh, the next innovation coming to the interventional cardiology to make uh, the PCI a better procedure? First, uh, uh, about the new technologies, in my mind, the uh, two very important new technologies developed uh, uh, during this time is uh, intravascular imaging that uh, uh, help us to uh, understand the problem is a good tool for teaching. 
or to uh, understand some failure of some difficulties. And then the, the other technology is how to deal with uh, very calcified relation. This is a really uh, uh, important uh, new technologies. About the future, first, what I've learned is to be cautious before to explain that uh, there is a future or no future of a new technologies. I think is the, the innovation and the technologies is on an exponential curve. And we don't know exactly where we are in a curve. And due to the financial interest, uh, investment uh, financial interest uh, of the different company and startup, we can uh, imagine that uh, this will follow on the, on the exponential curve. On today, you see there is uh, now the robotic uh, intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence, and the robotic. Is this probably a future? I, I believe in this future. I don't know when, maybe 10 years or 20 years, but uh, I, 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 I follow and believe in this future. Uh, about the extension. But, but of, do you think, George, um, dear, dear Sean, I have the very interesting question. Do you believe that we um, use in 20 years always the wire guiding guiding wire and we have this old balloon and this um, balloon mounted stand? Do you think we have this technology even in 20 years? Okay, it's a good question. Uh, uh, and uh, be careful with my answers because. You know, uh, I believe, I strongly believe uh, in, the f in the future, uh, I don't know if it's uh, 10, 20 years, that uh, other technologies will replace the stent because it's, uh, stent is repairing something, repair something, but we still live uh, within the vessel uh, I know that uh, maybe the development of bioresorbable stent is the future, but we leave a piece of, of, of metal. It makes uh, logic that uh, in the future we find uh, other solution to remove the ateroma plaque and then clean the artery. I, I don't know, 10 years, 20 years, but uh, I, I believe on that. That's, that's an interesting thought because I was also going to ask you about what your thoughts were about how we are sometimes sort of going back to the drawing board where we're looking to do less in terms of strategy. For example, in bifurcation stenting, there is now a greater school of thought or a philosophy towards a provisional uh, stepwise layered where we do less and also more towards drug coated balloons. So do you think there will be less, we'll be doing lesser maybe 20 years from now? Yeah, I, I believe. I believe that it will be less. I believe that it's not. Uh, what was the problem when the first tent was implanted? This place a, 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 a metallic piece of metal, or maybe piece of a bioresorbable device. It doesn't matter. Within the the the, the, the plaque is not. Uh, we don't ma we don't master with uh, mother nature yet. And then uh, be careful, even with a new DS, uh, what about uh, the delayed catch-up? So now it's exactly the same story. Uh, instant resinose is no more um, uh, 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 an issue with uh, DS. But at the same time, there is in the world several startup working how to resolve the problem of late instant resinose after instant, target instant implantation. We mean that uh, Today, what is the rate of uh, lead catch-up after DS implantation? We don't know. We don't know. And some startup are looking o o o on the different center and the figure of uh, around 10% is uh, maybe the answer. So we have to be careful when we place even drug if this that. So it makes sense to avoid this, uh, uh, and then starter are working to how to resolve this issue. But it makes sense to believe that uh, the future is not to leave a piece of metal 
within the artery. What would be? Maybe bioreserve of stent. What was the problem with bioreserve of stent? It was a conflict of interest with a bioreserve of stent. The first absorbed study was conducted, well conducted, but because nobody really understood what is beyond a trial, the secondary endpoint were present before the primary endpoint was reached. And that it was incredible to believe that the place, a bad stent, because it was the, uh, not a good stent within artery can resolve the problem. So this will take time to maybe develop a new tools that disappear or new, I don't know, laser or new other uh, technologies. Unfortunately, the best technology in the past, in the history, st start after war. So we hope that uh, we may not be the, the problem, but there is some technologies that can anticipate that we can maybe destroy the plaque, that Roma plaque, with a uh, new technology and believe on that. I don't know, 10, 20 years, I don't know. Absolutely. Yes, innovation is paramount to interventional cardiology. And as you so rightly pointed out about so many people, it's the field is also about the people performing the procedures. And to that extent, it was really heartwarming that you showed how there were women involved in the innovation, but still even in 2022, women in cardiology are a minority. So Professor Marco, why do you think that is and what can we do? Particularly, what, do you, what would you say to the younger women in cardiology coming into interventional cardiology? Okay, so first, uh, uh, I'm interested to see how many women are working now as interventional cardiology. Because I'm not so uh, negative. There, I, I see many women including you, but and coming, becoming leader in, in, in the field. You know the problem, not only in international cardiology, but you know the problem with the ladies, you know? You know the problem with the ladies. You know, ladies can perform, ladies can perform, women can perform successfully all the international cardiology. That I think is, is clear. The problem is the uh, issue is women and children. This is a, this is a problem, you know. You have a, 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 in the cat lab, you are in the cat lab, you have, a, you have a people in the cat lab, and then you have a three ladies, three women working in the cat lab, and two of them are pregnant, or you will be during, or we do during the, few months, you know, maybe the future with uh, uh, robot, uh, robotic and uh, can uh, resolve this issue, but today is an issue. Do you agree or not? I would argue that a diverse workforce would be great uh, for everyone. Yes, it's, uh, it should be one for all of us. And uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Aisha. Yes, we, we especially hope that uh, women will be better represented um, in the future. So um, I think we have a, uh, we had an excellent session. Professor Marco highlighted very, very well where we started from. And I think this is a very important point because if we don't know where we started from, we cannot uh, foresee the future or we cannot uh, aim for something. So with that being said, thank you so much uh, to all of you. Thank you so much, Professor Holger Neff. Thank you so much, Assistant Professor Aisha Kader. Thank you, especially Professor Jean Marco for your teachings. And um, we hopefully uh, hope that we will see you again, maybe next year uh, for another webinar. And let's hope that your predictions might or will come true, uh, that, that no stent will be implanted and we will be able to treat the coronary artery disease without the intracoronary material. So thank you so much, Professor Marco. Would you have any closing uh, uh, sayings? 
So about uh, the future, uh, what I've learned from uh, Bernie Muir, uh, the fellow of uh, Anas Ganzi that uh, developed the course in Geneva, he recorded everything during the first courses and he recorded the comment of the key opinion leader about the future. And uh, now what I've added, this, uh, my comment, I understand that uh, the, my comment has been recorded, but I can promise to you that uh, I will not be there to look in 20 years if uh, it is true or not. So I hope that 20 years we disappear. But uh, it's difficult to, to anticipate the future. You have to move step by step. But the most important, in my advice, one, we have to understand what is Bayern trial. trial. We have to understand all ratio. Uh, uh, and confident interval, all this world, Capremeyer, uh, if not, uh, how to evaluate the future? And what happened is that some innovation or some new technology was very promising and disappeared. Why? Because uh, the study were not a good. Study. And that uh, be careful, the story, for example, the story of the syntax trial. The syntax trial for me killed the concept of evidence-based medicine in, uh, in international cardiology, because it was a negative trial. Why it was, uh, uh, this trial don't reach the, 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 the end point, uh, the primary uh, end point. And then is secondary end point are used to implement uh, guideline or evidence-based medicine. This is not a good practice. We have to understand what is real. The second point, it's impossible to believe that uh, in all your center, you will use uh, all the device, costly device for all the patient. This is not possible. So medical doctors have to be aware with what does it mean, health economy. And then my third message is how to become a, 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 a chief, how to become a leader. This is a, we have to teach, you have to teach to learn on that. Yes, with, with great effort. Uh, and I think, I think the teamwork is, is, the, is the, the, the key to being also a great leader, but also to be very humble and uh, uh, just to accept uh, uh, criticism and also to construct uh, um, around the criticism and around the other achievements. Thank you so much, Professor Marco. Thank you to my special guests, Professor Holger Neff and um, uh, Dr. Aisha Kader. Thank you so much. It was, it was an excellent session. I hope to see you next time. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yasha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.